So the Danes, the only Europeans to qualify for the women's doubles Super Series finals. Oh. Another seven pairs all from Asia. And of course, both the Danish players have actually won the Super Series finals mixed doubles titles previously. Because Pedersen won in 2009, of course, playing with a regular partner, Jorgen Fischer. And Camilla Ruti won in 2008 with Thomas Leiborn. And Thomas Leiborn, of course, is now retired after the Olympic Games. But what's interesting is Camilla Ruti actually reached the final of the Super Series finals in women's doubles in Johor Bahru, playing. That was in 2009, of course, playing with Lina Fria Christiansen. nice defense now of course Steve you will know these Danish players very well indeed and obviously part of their strength is that they're both very tall athletes they're both physically very strong they've been highly successful in mixed doubles so one assumes that uh, they will both look to come forward, but they are a very solid pair all round, aren't they? Although they play a lot of mixed doubles, they're not afraid to work from the back of the court. No, uh, and, and the funny thing is that they very rarely practice ladies' doubles. Um, so, it's sort of, also, uh, ladies, playing ladies' doubles also keeps them in, in the right shape for playing the mixed doubles. Uh, they're very tall girls, and, and uh, they need to move well. It's of course, in ladies' doubles, but also in, in the mixed, uh, it's so important. Um, having said that, there's no doubt that they should not try to uh, play too many long rallies with the Japanese girls. I'm pretty sure that they are more mobile player for player than the Danes are. So how will they try and keep the rally shorter then? Um, I think they're going to emphasize a lot on the service situation. Uh, try to see if they can provoke uh, mistakes from, from Japanese girls. And if they're attacking, they will attack a lot like, uh, they should attack a lot like uh, Carsten Mons and Matthias Ball. Um, keep the balance. and try to get the front player uh, to intercept. In defense, it's so important that they don't play this high defense uh, because in the long run, it will not work. They need to be creative in the defense and, and come forward, both of them, because of their mixed double skills, because of their game reading skills. I'm sure it's going to be a quite a tactical match because I'm pretty sure the Japanese um, in general has the right uh, strategy against uh, Camilla and Christina. It's just about who can execute it uh, better today. the Danes are seeking to play, no. even though they want it. But in the long run, they're not going to win the majority of these long rallies, I don't think so. Don't have to either, they just have to win the next four long rallies. I hope. <laughs> or I 
think. Yeah. Um, and if you revert that, then the Japanese don't have to defend in a lot of long rallies. They only have to defend in the next four or five rallies to show that their defense is good enough to withstand the attack of the Danes and then the attack of the Danes perhaps will, will be worried that they can't go through uh, get through with their attack and, and need to find something else to do oh, well that looked a bit of a miss hit to me yeah <laughs> I think it must have been very effective though judgment Absolutely delightful from Takahashi. Yeah, really nice shot placement. Drifting wide. Of course, this Japanese pair uh, really have taken a, a big step forward this year. And we paid so much attention to the three more famous pairs that have been ranked higher than them in the last 12 months. That, but suddenly, I mean, they've they've just come to their own. Really, I remember them beating the Olympic champions at the semi-final of the Denmark Super Series event a couple of months ago it really was a sensational victory that they really are a danger pair and I think everybody's paying a lot more attention to them now yeah, and it's really nice for, uh, for ladies doubles that there are more nations actually capable of playing ladies doubles at a high level um, of course, uh, Yu Yang, Wang Shaoli are still pretty amazing for, for China, but uh, the Olympic champions, uh, Chen Qing and uh, Zhao Yunlei, you can beat them on a good day. And, um, and that's really comforting for, uh, for the pairs from the other countries in the world, that it's, it's doable. Yeah. Yes, of course. European champions proved that in the Olympic group stage when they beat the pair that went on to win the gold medal. Precise information from uh, Jesper Larsen here. Um, 
devastating that when when the Danes play just a little bit uh, downwards to the Japanese uh, he wants the net player to move um, an issue that we've discussed in the mixed doubles but it yeah. goes just as well in the latest doubles to move um, and, and cover the straight shot um, actually the mixed shot in the latest double uh, targets the middle of the of the court close to the sideline and he also wants them to when they're lifting to put a good height on the shots I agree on that on the first lift but then after that what would you like to see then if, if drives or, or blocks turning the shuttle yeah if we're in good position, I don't want this to uh, us. I don't want any pair to just stand there lifting, except perhaps for uh, precisely these Japanese pairs who has excellent defense. That's exactly what uh, the Danes have been working on, uh, being able to penetrate this really, really uh, tough defense. Um, and not go into panic mode and say, oh, we can't kill it. Well, then we have to change just a little bit. Good shot. Whereas the Japanese, they will have, they'll have big trouble killing it on uh, the Danes if the Danes are in good position. How will they manage to here? Yeah, that's Tomo says no, I don't want to change the shuttle. And most of the time it doesn't really matter because the only thing that the players are seeking to do is to break the rhythm. Just by discussing it, you've already broken it. No, that's the case. It had the desired effect as far as the Danes are concerned. And now they can change it because it's their own serve, so normally uh, you're allowed to change the shuttle, but they're not, so maybe it wasn't that bad. Oh, that's a shocking serve. Go away with that. Long at the back line. And we can see Christina not using all the power that she that she could, and that leaves it up to the Japanese girls to decide how much power they're going to apply in the defense, and that's not always that easy. Well, there was a couple of very hard thumps in that rally from Camilla Rutiu. Hopefully that means more flick serves, which I'd like to see in ladies' doubles. Oh, that's a lovely play from Matsutomo. She really has a great uh, intercepting ability at the net, reads the game so well. Definitely the most dangerous um, 
position with Matsutomo at the net and Takahashi at the back court. on that smash doing the damage and it's interesting to me the fact that Matsutomo is a very instinctive doubles player you've talked about her reading of the game at the front of the court and intercepting well and it's especially interesting when you consider that as a junior she enjoyed far more success at the singles And just to explain that a little bit further, of course, singles and doubles in badminton is not like singles and doubles in tennis. It's very specialized in the uh, sort of tactics that you play, the awareness and the reading of the game. Very, very different disciplines altogether. Yeah, but w one uh, possible explanation could be that this uh, reading ability also goes for, for single, and that has sort of helped her reach a high level as a junior player, uh, perhaps her, her, um, her, um, posture. Posture, yeah. Posture, um, uh, means that she'll have a difficulty reach, uh, reaching a really high level in, in senior singles and, and Because of her height, you mean, or? Yeah. Or lack of it, she's not yeah. the tallest of players, no, no. is she? 159, that's just under six, uh, five foot two and a half. And, and also, um, her role, her creative role in this um, Japanese ladies' double is, is really important the way I see it. If, if Japanese ladies' double is to develop, because uh, it hasn't been their strong side, the creative um, shots. No. So, trying to build more dangerous um, more easy scoring ladies double could be part of the um, thought process important situation now many times you've seen players leading 19-17, losing 21-19. Guiding the shuttle into the open space, keeping it low over the net. And the European champions from Denmark, Christina Pedersen and Camilla Ruta Yule. Look at that, that's glorious, isn't it? Opening game, 21 17 in 19 minutes of play. Behind two coaches going on to court and each speaking to a 
one of the players rather than one coach speaking to both players as a partnership? Um, yeah, initially I don't like it. I, I think it, um, it must be confusing for the players and uh, yeah, I, I simply can't see the benefits of it. Um, it's and it, it should mean that, that one coach is only uh, watching and monitoring one player and the other coach is monitoring the other player. And I don't think you can, you can look at it from that point of view. It's something that I have personally always found very strange. And, and yet we see it so often with these Asian players, Asian coaches. And of course, the Asian players are in essence dominating world badminton I mean, you can't really argue they must be doing something they're, right they're doing something right but it does seem odd doesn't it because i mean our philosophy in europe is very much that you know you win as a pair you lose as a pair and it's not somebody's fault or that you know if if somebody's going to say to me as a player jill you've got to cover that then I need my partner to know that I'm going to be covering that one and she's yeah. got to cover the uh, the other side of the court. So it's it's that communication, that understanding with within the partnership that seems to break down when oh. you have two separate coaches. Yeah. Then? Perhaps sometimes a, a wish to help to sort of calm your own nerves as a coach. I sometimes felt myself shouting and cheering and everything was actually going fine. It was just that I was nervous. Yeah. still presuming that there's um, a drift from the Japanese towards the Danes. It should be a more attacking, um, more attacking uh, game, this one. The Danes should want to attack a lot in order to prevent the Japanese girls from killing it. And the Japanese should want to attack a bit more in order to prevent the Danes from attacking. Oh. Yeah, that won't help her confidence on her serve, will it? Service uh, I think, error. I think we'll see her in the practice hall tomorrow. Even if they should lose this match. by Takahashi here. It's not that she's not able to read the game at all. It's, it's just that uh, it seems to me that Matsutomo is, is even better at it. Yeah, and tell me, is, from a coach's perspective, I mean, we've talked about the instinctiveness of Matsutomo. And that, I'm sort of assuming, she's been born with. It just happens naturally. But from a coaching perspective, presumably you can teach that to a player to a certain degree of, well, if your partner hits it here, the most likely return is going to be this straight one. So you've got to start looking for that rather than waiting to react, start moving early. Or, or do you think that you can't really coach it to to the ultimate that's a very interesting question because uh, i know that a lot of coaches think that it's sort of birth given yeah uh, i don't think so um no but it's hard to teach it's so much easier if you have it uh, a bit net more naturally yeah i remember in um in 
eight to five um, when Jo Bong Park started playing mixed doubles with Ra Kyung Min, who was originally a singles player. Yeah. Very, very strong singles player. Won the Singapore Open. Yeah, they did. No, she did as as women's singles. Oh, she did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that at yeah. that time. I was uh, I would just be sad because it wasn't a Dane at that no. time. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, but um, what happened was that uh, she learned really, really fast. I remember she, they were playing uh, Michael Sogard and Ricky Olsen, and and she made some mistakes during the first game. And you could see Park was really urging her on and talking to her and teaching her. And then she actually she actually got the idea. But Park didn't believe that it happened so fast, so he still covered behind mm. her. But she had all the shots that he told her to have. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, she became an extraordinary mixed doubles player. Yes, I think she and Kim Dong Moon lost about four times in five years on something. It's an extraordinary record. We'll check that for you overnight. We'll look at the record books. We can say that um, they lost at the Worlds whenever they met uh, Jiang Jun and uh, Gao Ling. Mm. And once at the Olympics as well, I think. Yeah, and lost to the Danes. Lost to Jonas Rasmus and Ricky Olsen. That's right. Oh, that's a good return. And the momentum has changed to the Japanese side here. Taking the control of um, the second game. Mm. All stemming from some good serving. Dane's unable to attack the low serve. Opportunity from Camilla Rutio. And a six point advantage to the Japanese pair at the mid game interval. Well, their two previous encounters, these two pairs have always gone the full distance. And since they last met, I don't think they've both improved considerably as pairs. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the fastest female smash of the week. Oh no, not quite as fast as I thought it looked. 213. It's not shabby though, is it? But it was hit only with the arm. Quite a bit to the left of her body. I've just been reliably informed by our speed gun expert that the fastest smash from Camilla Rutiul so far in this match was 236.
This is quite extraordinary to me, Steen, how quickly it all seems to have turned around. Yeah. Um, I think strategically, the Danes haven't played really well in, uh, in this second game. They've exposed themselves to counter-attacking on a number of occasions. And uh, the Japanese have been really good at taking these opportunities. Where did that come from? Some sort of sliced smash. Mm, just creating a different angle. Shuffle coming down a little steeper. Uh, mistake here because uh, the shot from Christina exposed the Danes again but the Japanese not able to take advantage of it this time creating a lot of uh, quite easy mistakes. There's, so in all fairness, I think maybe saw out of the corner of her eye that Camilla Rutiul was dashing forward. And that's precisely what you were talking about earlier, about that movement and the threat of being at the net, forcing opponents into error. The mentally forced errors. Yeah. Well, the Japanese pair were convinced that she had taken the shuttle before it had crossed over the net. Let's have a look at that. Oof. She didn't even touch it. And perhaps the racket was over the net. Sutton, the Danes are attacking like a hot knife through butter. Yeah. And I can see Jesper Larsen is talking to the players. I'm pretty sure that uh, he's come up with a plan on where to direct the first smashes so the net player knows a bit more about the possible returns from the Japanese side. is attacking themselves.
Japanese here. The Danes are having trouble getting the right length on their lifts. Playing. Yeah, it's a correct call. A bit too short. the ability to direct the shots where it hurt the most at the opponents but um, this time just stayed on the Japanese side Drift at 6.13 down. Very questionable call. I tend to agree with the Japanese. Did you think that was wide? I think so. I'm not sure it actually was wide, but shots like that are normally called wide because this that only part of the shuttle should touch the line. Yeah. That that's short, sort of disappeared. It should be directly on the line in order for it to be called in. <laughs> and we can see uh, Camilla over to Yule and Jesper Larsen communicating strategy is working the attacking strategy yeah, so they've just won 12 with last 15 points oh my goodness what a turnaround That's how we've seen her play the mixed doubles in this tournament. Yeah. Two points away from a place in the semi final. and soul into that rally. Well, not altogether surprising that the Danes have gone off court while the court is mopped. <laughs> and the mop is broke. Four match point opportunities. stage 15 of the last 18 points going their way 
I thank the fans for their support. 21 17, 21 16 in 40 minutes and I was absolutely convinced that we were going to be treated to a third in deciding game. Well, she's going to throw a racket to a lucky fan. And now her partner, Camilla Rutiol, will do the same the other end of the court. Well, obvious delight for the European champions. Well, you have to give them a huge amount of credit because I thought they had completely gone off the boil. I thought the Japanese pair were tactically beginning to really sort out the Danes. But somehow the Danes managed to turn it all around in very dramatic fashion. It all changed so quickly. So for Christina Pedersen, She's going to be a busy lady tomorrow. Two semi-finals for her to contest, but let's just enjoy her victory here in this women's doubles because they, of course, are through to the semi-final and they'll play against the Olympic champions, Tiang Ching and Zhao Yunlei.